happy to do with my speaking Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another one of our learning series. Um, we are excited to bring you a, a panel discussion tonight about the blue mind theory and some of our staff and the panelists will be talking more about what that theory is and what it means to them. I'm Kathy Barker. I'm the executive director here in, here in Gut Learning Center. Um, for those of you who may not be as familiar with us, we're an institution that's been in existence for about almost 22 years now with our main focus being on the uh, initially the St. George Peninsula and our um, marine ecosystems and the fisheries. We've expanded over the years in that mission and the work that we've done has expanded. And we now are very focused on healthy water, ocean and climate literacy and sustainability. And we offer our programming for students, teachers and community all the way up into interior Maine. Um, this new learning series has been something that's been one of our silver linings of the pandemic that we have start, started thinking about what else can we be doing to help build a stronger community amongst itself of stewards about our um, climate and envi environment. And um, some of us had read this book, Blue Mind, and it really touched us and got yeah. us thinking. And so we're very excited to put this panel together tonight to really do some further exploration about the whole concept of this Blue Mind Theory. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sally, and she will introduce our panelists for tonight. Thank you, Kathy. So we have three wonderful special guests tonight, in addition to our very talented um, educational staff. So first, I would like to introduce Eric Hopkins. And those of you that are joining us, we wanted to be able to see your faces, but if you could mute yourself, that would be so helpful. And we'll have a chance to um, hear your voices if you have questions or comments. So um, first, I'd like to introduce Eric Hopkins. Eric is a local artist, and he has engaged numerous people through his art with his thoughts about life on this big blue planet. And note the word blue, it's just so prevalent in our conversation tonight. He captures the dynamic forces and the rhythms of nature in watercolor, oils, um, and blown glass, mixed media, and photography. His vision focuses on the big picture of the natural world, geological and geographical forms, in the exchange of energy between earth, water, and sky. From this intimate study of nature, Eric has developed a, clean, a keen awareness of light and form, color, and pattern, which is reflected in all of his work. Eric's a graduate of Rhode Island School of Design and has taught at Haystack Mountain School of Crafts in Pilchuck Glass School. He's exhibited all throughout the state of Maine and beyond and his work is in many museums, um, personal collections, and corporate collections as well. So we're thrilled to have Eric join us tonight. We next have uh, Catherine Schmidt, who um, is on our panel. And she is the author of several books, Historic Acadia National Parks, The President's Salmon, Restoring the King of Fish in Its Home Waters, and A Coastal Companion, A Year in the Gulf of Maine uh, from Cape Cod to Canada. So very interesting topics. Catherine's a journalist and writer of numerous articles and essays. Uh, she's published in many newspapers, magazines, and literary journals. And the content is always related to science, nature, environment, and place. So you can see why we wanted her on our panel uh, tonight. She is a um, informed by undergraduate and graduate degrees in environmental science. And she is a Stone Coast um, MFA in creative nonfiction and extensive field experience with lakes, streams, wetland, forest, shorelines and beaches throughout the Northeast. Professionally, her work includes um, science communication for the Skudik Institute at Acadia National Park. And she's the co-author and editor of Maine's Climate Future Reports, 
writing about science and directing communications for Maine Sea Grant. And Catherine was managing editor for The Catch, writings from down east Maine. So we're thrilled to have Catherine join our discussion tonight. And we also have John McElwain, who has practiced and taught Buddhist meditation for over 20 years in Washington, DC, New York City, and Maine. From the time he was seven years old, he lived on and around the water, growing up racing sailboats and cruising the waters of the East Coast, the UK, and Northern Europe. He is retired from a career in law, government, business, and as a senior fellow in housing and sustainability at an international real estate nonprofit. He and his wife, Wendy, now live on the harbor in Port Clyde, Maine, with their beautiful greyhound, Luna. So thank you so much for joining us. And I would now like to turn the program over to Georgie Burris and Patrick Burnham. They're gonna tell you a little bit about themselves and um, they will navigate the waters today. Take care. So as Sally said, my name is Georgie Burris. I'm the coordinator of educational programs here at Herringut. Um, I've been an educator at Herringut um, since 2018. And water has really stayed with me my whole life. I grew up um, in Massachusetts, spending my summers uh, sailing on the local pond in my town and splitting my time between um, kind of inland Massachusetts on a pond and coastal Massachusetts um, on Cape Ann. And that really, that love of the water really guided me my whole life. I went to Tufts for Tufts University um, for undergrad, where I was on the rowing team um, for several years, spent most of my mornings bright and early 5 a.m. out on the water. Um, and after I finished undergrad, I moved down to um, the Bahamas, where I worked at the Cape Luther Institute, and I did fisheries research and um, education outreach for um, students from really all over the world. Um, and I took that love of water and I actually ended up in Michigan, um, the most inland place that I have ever lived. Um, and I got my graduate degree at Michigan State University in fisheries and wildlife, where I spend most of my time actually still in the Bahamas. Um, after that, I decided it was time to come back to New England and what better place to be in New England than the coast of Maine. So I found myself here at Herringut. And I live um, just down the road in Camden, um, and I actually live on Hosmer Pond, so I get to see the water every morning when I wake up. I'll turn it over to Patrick now. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Patrick. I am an educator at Herring Gut Learning Center. I am pretty new to Herring Gut. I only just moved back to Maine um, in December. I am originally from here, uh, not here, Mid Coast area. I grew up in Gardner, Maine, yeah, inland, um, and grew up loving the ocean, loving coming to the ocean uh, and exploring uh, our coast, the Maine coast, kind of where I fell in love. I actually just got a message from my like sixth grade science teacher the other day, sending me a picture that was like, hey, look at this report that said, I want to be a marine biologist on it, um, all the way back from sixth grade. And she knows that I work for Hair and Gut, and she was so excited that I like lived out that dream and, you know, worked in marine science. Uh, I went to school at University of New England, uh, got my degree in marine biology, and then moved out to California to work at the Catalina Island Marine Institute, teaching marine science to uh, field trips, kiddos out there, and have since moved back now to Maine. I live in Rockland and enjoy myself so much working in Port Clyde at Herringut Learning Center. So it's a little bit about me. So we're going to start our night with actually um, hearing from you folks in a way through a survey. So if you've read the book, um, The Blue Mind, they refer frequently to different kinds of surveys that folks take where they look at different images um, and choose different options. So we're gonna do um, our hair and gut form of that survey. So in the chat, I'm going to drop a link to a survey. It should only take everyone about a minute or two and then we'll come back and we'll go over some of those survey results and we'll start in on our evening. So if everyone wants to just take a couple minutes and fill out that survey. You can also, if you see that link and you don't necessarily want to do it on your main computer and you have your cell phone nearby, you can just go right to 
the browser, internet browser, type that right in. It'll bring you directly to the survey as well if you wanted to do two different screens. It's a really fun survey. I lost everything except a few small people on the side and see no survey. Eric, if you go into the chat, do you see at the bottom next to the- I, I did see the chat, but I don't see it now. I'm gonna uh, send, send it again. Maybe it'll pop okay. back up. I clicked on the chat and it just went to my white screen. Oh no. Yeah. The, the, actually, the email with the uh, Zoom info. Ah. Oh. Nobody home. Okay, where is that little? I can also there? read out what the um, URL is. It's not very long. If okay. you want to just type it in. Okay. It's a surveymonkey.com. Okay, surveymonkey.com. So where do I put that? Um, in the top bar of your screen in the search. I wonder also, it might be easy if you have your, you know, your other device open. Maybe I can just send this to you in an email. Okay, yeah. Okay. Could you send me one too, please? Yeah. Oh. Who is who is that? This I'm Betsy Kunkel. Betsy, I wonder if um Sally is okay. able to send that. I don't oh. have your email, Betsy. Okay, which kind? Well, never mind. Don't, I'll okay. just listen. I, I just got it. I went on to my Zoom icon on the sidebar, and then got the chat thing again. Which color is up to the tent? Okay, I'm gonna give us another minute. I'm just um, gathering the results of our survey. <laughs> Thanks, Tina, for the support there. <laughs> it's okay, you guys can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> just get on with it.
Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Alrighty. So we had 17 people that were able to do the survey. So um, this looks a little different than the survey looked, but for those of you that weren't able to get there, um, and SurveyMonkey does this silly thing where they, I, I couldn't control the different colors of the bars. So bear with me with this because the colors aren't exactly what you see. So which color do you associate with being content? And there were four options, a blue square, a yellow square, a green square, and a red square. Um, the majority of people selected the blue square as feeling content with a few people selecting the green square. And the next question was, which color do you associate with being relaxed? And then again, the same color options, um, blue, yellow, red, and um, sorry, blue, yellow, green, and then red. Um, and again, the majority of people, 70% of people selected the blue square, about 30% of people selected the green square, and um, I think probably just one person selected the yellow square. So it's pretty interesting on our feelings so far. So which color do you associate with being anxious? And here, the vast majority of people chose the red square. I would have to agree on that one, um, with one person choosing the yellow square. So, and we'll get into kind of the, the details of the blue mind versus the red mind in a little bit. So if you were to pick a destination for a vacation, which place would you choose? And we had a picture of some islands in Bora Bora, the city in Tokyo, the mountains in Vermont, and then the desert in Moab. Um, and, you know, not surprisingly, given that this is definitely a biased group, we're all here for the Blue Mind um, workshop or um, meeting tonight. The mo majority of us selected the islands in Bora Bora. No one wanted to go to Tokyo. I think maybe also right now being in a city with a lot of people is a little um, scary for many people. Um, some folks wanted to go to Moab, and uh, probably one participant wanted to go to Vermont. Poor Vermont. <laughs> In which of the following settings do you feel most creative, or you come up with these ideas? In the shower, falling asleep at night, driving your car, or taking a walk? And that, this I thought was interesting. Um, it's sort of a mix, you know? Folks are feeling their most creative at all these different times. Um, some taking a walk driving the car, falling asleep at night, or in the shower. That's why they always have those um, devices where you can write uh, the write in the rain paper for your shower and that kind of thing. People come up with fantastic ideas in the shower. Which of these four homes would you want to retire to? Um, it was a desert house in Arizona, a beach house in sort of a nondescript coastal location, a mountain cottage, and a city apartment. And far and beyond, <laughs> there's majority of people chose the beach cottage. Um, a few people would like the city apartment or the mountain cottage or the beach or the um, desert location, but most folks were really into the beach house. And then our last question, which image makes you feel happy? So um, this was varying degrees of water in all these different images. So there was an image that was mostly the ocean. There's an image that was a wide river. Um, there was an image that was a stream, so a smaller amount of water. And then there was an image of just a small pond. Um, and the majority of people selected the ocean, um, the full wide ocean image. So with the most water visible in that image. Um, and then um, the stream came next. Um, it was kind of a babbling stream through the woods. And then a river and pond last. Um, yeah, so Patrick, if you wanted to talk a little bit about the blue mind and kind of how that applies to a lot of these answers, I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen. Awesome. So the whole, the purpose of that survey uh, that we created was to try and uh, get this point across. And like Georgie said, it was a little biased because we all are here with this interest in blue minds, but we kind of wanted to nail it home that this blue mind theory is prevalent in people's lives. And in case you didn't read the book or have come across this idea of blue mind theory, I'm gonna give a little bit of a rundown and we're gonna dig into 
some more details with our um, awesome panelists as we go forward. Uh, but the Blue Mind theory is characterized as a mild state of meditation that invokes a sense of calm, peacefulness, happiness, and contentment. And it's all centered around water and how we, our bodies, our minds react to being around water. Um, it said that your brain subconscious has a positive reaction to being on, in, or near, or under water, okay? And so our bodies kind of have this innate reaction that they seem, we seem to be more peaceful, more calm, more receptive to ideas, um, more creative, uh, more likely to have a sense of awe and wonder while we're near and interacting with water. This also means like varying degrees of water that one of those last questions that we were talking about and most people, you know, the, what makes you most happy? And we show the wide open ocean and then the river, the babbling stream and a pond. We got big, you know, bodies of water and then we moved downwards. And that was to uh, kind of characterized in the book, the author um, brings up that the more water, the more happiness or the more contentment, the more relaxed. So that's why around the ocean where it's uh, water, as far as you can see, is better for our minds. And then as the water starts to diminish, we start to move away from that blue mind and um, have a little bit more of what some people will call the red mind state because with the blue mind there's the red mind or you know yin yang black white opposites here in the red mind being the state of over stimulation anxiety and stress it's uh so it, it's kind of the opposite and what we'll talk on and when we ask our panelists our questions is why or how it does our brain 